What's going on everybody, I'm Patrick from Powlax and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the general drill, a 1v1 drill that Lars Tiffany taught at the 2019 IMLCA convention. I'm not positive that we run it the exact same way as Coach Tiffany and Virginia, but this is a modification that really works for us as we were building our offense through the 2020 season until obviously it got you know shut down. Before we get started, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Powlax where you can download and print the playbook PDF that accompanies this and over 50 other Powlax videos by becoming a patron and supporting this channel. The goal for this channel is to put out free, in-depth lacrosse coaching content for coaches and players to access anytime, anywhere. Also, be sure to check out the brand new Powlax Teespring store, where you can get Powlax hoodies, t-shirts, tank tops, mugs, even phone cases, and customize them to fit your team's colorway. The first thing that we're going to do within this video is recreate the exact 1v1 situation from 6-on-6 six six that we'll be seeing within this drill. And so we've got two examples. The first is a great defensive example from Duke. The second is a really good offensive example from Penn. In our Duke example against Notre Dame, Notre Dame is running a bit of a Q style set where they're going to be dodging here, they're going to mirror, they're going to fade with M2, and they're going to cut the middle with M3. So now um, I want to say that A2 kind of just sits in here while A3 is kind of the outlet forward. So now on the defensive end, DM1 stays with this dodge. He actually does a very good job of actually defending the dodge. D1 kind of shows into space here, and then the LSM kind of stays with M2, and then DM2 is going to come in with this cut the middle. Now, as M1 reads that D1 might slide, he steps away, rolls back, and he skips the ball through to M2 on the other wing. Now, as that happens, the LSM actually comes out to play A1 because he thinks M1 might pass back here. But then what we end up having is DM2 is moving out here to defend the dodge against M2, and he does a really great job of just defending this dodge. He breaks down well. He uses all of the right things in the defensive emphasis that we're going to be getting to in a minute, and he defends the dodge. Works out very well. But so this is the situation that we are going to be utilizing in our general drill. As we begin the clip, the ball is passed down to M1 and he takes his dodge down the alley. Now notice how D1 has to show to deter the dodge. As he shows, DM2 does a great job of covering inside for D1, but this also leaves our backside open. So as M1 steps away, question marks, and throws the ball through, this is what creates our one-on-one. -on -one. So as DM2 approaches the ball, he does a great job of taking away top side, gets broken down so he can react to the dodger, and he drives the dodger down the alley. Now as he deters the this dodge, the dodger tries to roll back and he ends up throwing the ball away. Now in our second example of U Pen, we're actually going to get a pick behind with A2 and M3. And so as A2 begins his dodge, he makes his move, kind of comes back towards X, and M3 is going to come down and he's going to set his pick on D2, and he is going to roll this way. Now as D2 defends the dodge, he does a pretty good job, and as the pick comes, DM2 actually tries to double with D2 against A2. Now, at this point in time, it's kind of cool. You see the goalie kind of think like he's gonna come out. He doesn't actually end up coming out, and because they leave M3 open, the ball is passed back to M3. Now, at this time, they slide from the crease with D3 here, which leaves a 4v3 up top. Now, the ball movement is pretty exquisite from Penn, and they, they do a great job of, of reading exactly where the opening is. They probably could have found it with one less pass. But so, once D3 was drawn, A3 actually kind of swoops back and D1 defends him. M1 is open, so they go up to M1, up to A1, and then at this time, because D1 is then approaching A1, they actually throw it back inside to A3 here. And at that time, D3 is kind of recovering, but DM1 is also in kind of defending. And then they actually throw it out to M2, and we get our one-on-one -on -one scenario where DM1, who was helping inside, approaches M2. M2 uses a great double move. He squares him up. Uh, splits to his left, rolls back to his right, gets a little bit top side, and because he's within range, he has a great shot on cage, bouncer, 
that goes in. So we start with the dodge from back left towards X and we get a pick that comes from the crease. Now as the defensive players move to double the dodge from X, the player slips out and then receives a pass. Now at this point, I mentioned that the ball was thrown up to the wing and then up to the top, then into the middle. He actually just ends up dodging up the wing and throws the ball up top. Now we get our feed inside and then the feed out to the wing. And this is the one-on-one -on -one that we are talking about. The offensive player squares up his man, splits to his left before rolling back to his right and shoots a nice bouncer around a screen. This is a great example of an offensive player that understands that his range may extend beyond other players' ranges. Now, just because this is an example of exactly what the drill is giving us within a game, we're also just building on the idea that once we are in this situation where we are recovering when an offensive player catches the ball on the edge of dangerous space, we have to make contact. We have to win the point of contact. If we don't embrace contact against a dodger, we're going to get beat on the defensive end. If we don't embrace contact from the offensive point of view, we're going to get pushed to the sideline and we're not going to be able to capitalize on those great offensive situations. Now, in these situations, when we're live in a game, there are a bunch of things that we're going to want to do and we're going to want to emulate them once once we get to the drill portion of this video. So from the offensive end, the first thing that we want to make sure our players are doing is communicating. They're going to be accepting a pass and in a game, if a player is in a position where they're going to be able to accept a pass on dangerous space, maybe make one move and then shoot or even just shoot as they catch the ball, they're going to want to use the phrase one more. So we're going to want them to do that within this drill. The second thing that we are going to want our offensive players to do is to catch the ball loaded in that triple or double threat position where they are able to pass, shoot, or dodge. And so from up top, when they're here, this is going to be pretty easy. They're just going to catch, wind up, ready to go. But when they're below GLE, they're going to want to catch it, be able to pass, and then also have the ability to dodge as well. The third thing from the offensive end is the type of dodges that they can use. They can do a ton of different stuff here. They can catch the ball, wind up as if they're going to shoot, which could make the defense hesitate. They they can also square up their man and use jab steps. Because they're at the edge of dangerous space and the defense has to be so exact with how they approach and how they break down, using subtle hesitations can work extremely well. And finally, any kind of double move where they make a quick like two or three step move to one side and then go back the other way, those can be very, very useful. The next thing that the offense has to do in this situation is they have to embrace contact. You know, if they beat their man clean with their hesitation, double move, or their wind up move, you know, they're not going to have to embrace much contact. But if they are contacted with the defensive player, they need to be able to push through to turn the corner. That's basically the name of the game in this drill is we're putting the offense and the defense in a situation where we're going to see who has the ability to embrace contact, win the point of contact, and push through, get to the middle of the field, and score. Now, the final thing that we're going to want our offensive players to do is to shoot deceptively. So there's a ton of ways you can do that. You can use leaners, you can use teeter-totters, you can use fakes, you can not wind up at all. So that's one that I like a lot is, you know, a lot of players think that they really need to wind up in order to shoot. But if you don't look like you're going to shoot and you just, you know, are pushing into your guy and you can get off some type of lever shot or some other kind of shot like that, you can take the goalie by surprise, which can be very effective within this drill and mainly just within this situation in six on six. Now that we've gone over the offensive emphasis, let's talk defense. The first thing that we're going to want the defensemen to do when they enter the drill is get into that good off ball defensive stance where they can see the ball, they can see their man, they got their stick up, and they are ready ready to react to whatever happens. The second thing that we're going to want our defensemen to do is to communicate. So when they're in that off ball stance, waiting to rotate whichever direction or help whoever they need to help, they need to be communicating that they are either, you know, they could say I'm in, they could say two, whatever your off ball communication that fits this drill is, that's what you want to make sure that they are communicating. The next thing that we're going to want them to communicate is that they are rotating. And so you may say rotate, you may say wheel, whatever your verbiage is to tell everyone, hey, we all need to rotate now. That's what you need to make sure that they're saying. And finally, we want to make sure that they are communicating that they have ball. So as a defenseman is in the drill, we want them to be in a good off ball stance. We want to make sure that they're saying, hey, I got two, I got two, I got two, rotate, rotate, rotate. I got ball, I got ball, I got ball as we are doing the next things we talk about, which is all of the technical aspects of playing 1v1 defense in this situation. So now that we've got our off ball positioning and our communication down, we're going to want to use the A, B, C, Ds of individual defense. That's approach, breakdown, contact, and drive. 
So the first thing we have is our approach. And as our defensive players approach the offensive player, we want to dictate where the offensive player can go. So we're going to want to take angles that will push offensive players either down underneath the goal, up the wings, or down the alleys and over the side. We do not want to allow players to get in through to the middle of the field. Now, if you are a team advanced enough to play strong hands and in your scouting reports against other teams, you're going to say, hey, this kid's a lefty, take away his left and essentially allow him to get to the middle of the field because he's right-handed. You can do that as well. The second thing we have is to break down. Now, it seems a little counterintuitive because the offensive players are so close to the goal, but we have to be able to break down to slow our momentum and be able to run with the offensive players. A lot of players in this scenario, they kind of just want to run out and hit the offensive players. But if they do that, it just takes a very subtle and simple move from the offensive end to just dust our defensive players. So they have to break down, slow their momentum, and be able to run with the offensive players. Now, as our defensive personnel break down, if they're a short stick, we want to make sure that they have a nice cross-check form ready to drive out the offensive player. Whereas for the poles, we want to make sure that they have their bottom hand in their hip pocket, their top hand creates a V and their elbow is out with their stick so that their stick is out in front of them so that they can gauge distance with the offensive player and probably get their stick into the offensive player's stick, hands, gloves, or chest. Now that our defensive players have broken down, we're gonna use our C, which is to make contact. Now, as they make contact, this is all just about reading the offensive player. Their approach should have put them in a position where they are taking away what the offensive player wants. Now, they just need to make sure that as the offensive player makes their move, that their footwork allows them to press and push the offensive player where we want them to go. Now, if they you know, lunge out and over or pursue this they can get beat but so really they just need to make sure that they react well and that they make contact with that offensive player now the final thing we have is drive because we are so close to the goal here we do not want to use any bump and run style tactics we want to make sure we maintain that contact that entire time and that we drive these players out and away from the goal with that said this is not a place where we really want to throw a lot of checks. If you can, you know, if you get beat and you can throw a trail check, that's fine. But if you end up trying to throw checks more than move your feet, you're going to get burned and, you know, they're going to score a bunch of goals. Now let's get into exactly how we're going to want to set up the drill. The first thing we're going to want to do is create our line cones. And so these are going to be at the edge of dangerous space. They're going to be where our offensive players begin their dodges from. And so that's going to be here, top left, top right, back right, back left. So the back one should be a little bit below GLE, something where as that player catches the ball, he has to take a couple steps to get above GLE and then make contact with that defensive player. The top cone should be in a spot where if they can catch and shoot it, it's a little bit outside the range of one of the best shooters, right? So for high school, this is probably 12 yards. For college, it's probably about 15. But so it's going to kind of shrink and expand depending on what level each players are at. The next thing that we're going to want to set up is our off ball positioning cones. And this is going to help our defensive players know where they should be in the drill as if they were an off ball player ready to rotate. So that's this square here. And we're lucky enough to have these little like really thin mats that acted as these. So they didn't interrupt, you know, any of the actual play because a cone, you know, they're not kicking over this cone at all. But so what these basically signify is if we move D1 into the drill, he's going to start here on this cone. And it is essentially acting like the ball is here, which this is where the ball is actually going to begin. And so if he is defending his own line, this is about where he would be in that off ball stance, ready and waiting to rotate either direction, depending on which way we're running the drill at this point in time. The next thing we got to go over is where are the balls and the balls are always going to be with the defensive lines and they're going to be throwing them to the offensive players and that's going to allow us to cycle through a bunch of one-on-ones very very quickly and the final thing we have is who fills each line which is the defensive lines are always on a diagonal and the offensive lines are always on a diagonal and we're going to be able to manipulate where they line up and which direction the pass goes to create eight different one-on-one -on -one scenarios. So now let's get into running the drill. In our first example, we are gonna have the defensive players throw horizontal passes, which is going to create a vertical approach. So if you think about our situation, 
basically our defense is rotating this way and then D1 is gonna have to rotate up to play M1. And so as the drill begins, D2 is going to throw the ball to M1. As he throws the ball, D1 is going to take a good approach angle and approach O1. And now O1 is gonna catch it loaded, say he hitches to the top, let's say D1 you know, kind of misses just a bit and now O1 is going to shoot the ball from the middle of the field and maybe he scores. Now, once D2 moves the ball, he is going to immediately get inside and become the next off ball player who will play in the next rep. Then D3 is gonna throw the ball to O2 and this is going to start our second 1v1. So it's very, very quick pace. So he's in, he says, I'm two, I'm two, I'm two. The ball throws, he says, rotate, rotate, rotate. And he starts approaching this player. O2 catches the ball, has a little hesitation move. Maybe he inside rolls, you know, maybe the defenseman pushes him in the crease. But so then once the first one-on-one -on -one is over, the second one is initiated and these players just have to get out of the drill as they move through it. Then we run the second one and then we have a third one and it's just a continuous cycle of 1v1s over and over and over again. Now the final thing we have before we hit the live examples is all of the drill variants. So once we've run this and we've cycled through this a few times, then we're gonna switch it up and we can do that in one of two ways. And if you have the PDF, you're gonna see that there are four different ways we can run the drill. and. The reason is this creates two of our one-on-one -on -one scenarios. But if we tell these players to approach the other direction, like let's say we have D2 say, throw the ball down instead of throwing it across. Now we are doing vertical passes and horizontal approaches. And so that gets us a completely new set of one-on-one -on -one scenarios that we're gonna have to hit. And so in order to change up how the drill works, we can either change the direction of the pass or we can maintain the direction of the pass and just have the defenseman move to this line and that line and have the offensive players move to this line and that line. And so as we manipulate which line the offensive and defensive players are in, we create new scenarios. And if we manipulate which direction the pass versus the approach are, we also create new scenarios. The first video clip we're gonna watch is an overhead of the drill being run. This is an 80 second clip and we're gonna get 14 one-on-one -on -one reps in this 80 seconds. That comes out to one rep every six seconds. We're gonna start with the ball top right, it'll be thrown top left. Not a very good job of embracing contact on the offensive end right there. Next rep, this defenseman doesn't quite know where he is right now, and we push through on the offensive end. Decent rep. The next one, the defenseman's not quite ready. Get a nice little roll down the alley to a shot. In this rep, the defenseman doesn't lead with his stick. We get a decent no-angle shot. It goes in, but it wasn't our greatest rep. Next, we get a nice wind-up face dodge down the alley to a good bouncer. In this rep, we get an offensive player who pushes through to the middle of the field. That was a great rep. In the next one, we get a nice little hitch to the middle, shot lefty. In this rep, once again, an offensive player does not do a great job of embracing contact near the end. He kind of does, but he doesn't have an angle at that point. Next rep, we get a nice alley dodge to a rollback, to a kind of rollback shot. Not the best decision. This one, the defenseman kind of over pursues. He gets beat under, underneath. Next one, we have just a shot. In this rep, we get a great job pushing over the top, roll back to get good position down the alley. Great shot. In this one, we get a wind-up spin move to a shot down the alley. Could have been closer to the goal. In this one, we get a nice press upfield to a question mark to a strong left hand. And in this last one, we get a wind-up face touch to the middle where the player could have shot with his left hand, but then actually rolled back trying to get to his right. Now we're gonna go through and evaluate the drill at ground level. In this first clip, this player catches the ball a little bit wide and the defenseman does a good job to be broken down in a good position before the player really dodges. Now as he pushes top side or tries to, the defenseman does a really good job. Now he rolls back, pushes a little bit further inside, rolls back again, pushes even a little bit further, and now he's in a good position where he can take a shot so he shoots over the top of the defender. Great rep with a nice shot. Now in a game, this may not happen because the defense has time to recover and then send the next slide. But overall, it was a great job of the offense and defense embracing contact. 
In this next clip, the defenseman does a great job of getting out to his offensive player, breaking down and being ready to react. The offensive player doesn't embrace contact, uses a little shimmy, but the defenseman is already in a position to drive the offensive player down the alley, and he does just that. In this rep, the defensive player does a pretty good job of being in a position where he could push the offensive player down and underneath. The offensive player does a great job of squaring up his defender and jabbing to his left, which leaves the defender off to his right. The defender does a great job of keeping his stick in front, but as the offensive player forces contact underneath, the stick actually turns the defender so that he's not as powerful as he could be if he had gone to just a straight cross check, and the offensive player pushes through the contact and finishes with a nice little between the legs shot. In this rep, the offensive player catches the ball, kind of stumbles as he tries to make his hitch. The defenseman kind of thinks the drill is over, and so the offensive player, who doesn't quit on the play, picks it up, drives to his left, and has a great shot down the alley. Now, in these drills, it's imperative that players know that they should not quit on the play. Even if they have to roll back here and there a little bit, it's okay to let them extend the play a little bit, and we'll see that in one of our next clips. In this clip, our short stick defender does a good job of pushing the offensive player up the wing, and as the player rolls back, he continues to press and force the player to the outside and gives up a shot that we want to give up down the alley. In this clip, the defensive player takes a good approach, breaks down, and keeps the offensive player down underneath GLE. As the offensive player tries to roll underneath, he's about to hit the crease, and he decides to go around the goal. Now, at this point, if you want to end the drill, you can. We like to play it out. The defenseman takes an angle over the goal, and then they meet again on the right side of the goal. The defenseman does a great job to embrace contact and push the offensive player out. The offensive player does a good job as well. He pushes upfield, then rolls back, and has a decent shot. Now for our last clip, this defensive player was busy watching the rep before that lasted longer than it maybe should have, and because he was not in position for the next rep, he arrives late, and the offensive player has a time and room shot from 10 yards, which he buries. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to download the drill PDF that corresponds to this video, you can get that at patreon.com slash palex by clicking this link up here in the corner and becoming a patron. Huge thank you to all of the patrons who have continued to support throughout this spring season that has been canceled. Canceled. It really does mean the world to me and has been helping me out greatly, so thank you for that. Make sure to check out the Powlax Teespring account where you can get a bunch of Powlax merch that helps to support the channel. I will list it right up here as well, but so you can get stuff like tank tops, hoodies, shirts, mugs, uh, phone cases if you have kind of an older phone, but so that's just another way if you would like to help support the channel, you can do that that way and you actually get some tangible merch in your hand. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button, which I guess like 75% of the people that watch these videos don't actually subscribe, so definitely hit that subscribe button and follow Powlax on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and my personal account on LinkedIn. Have a good one. I will see you guys in the next video.